Okay, so now I want to think about polynomials and dividing polynomials. Now, you know, when you divide regular numbers, just good old-fashioned numbers, we know how that works. You divide one number into the other number, and you sort of long divide. I want to remind you of that because, in fact, that basic idea is the key to actually dividing polynomials. So let's just begin in thinking about how to divide and conquer polynomials. Let's first just think about dividing and conquering numbers. Suppose I wrote 103 divided by 3. Now, how would you actually long divide that out? Well, what you do is you would take that 3 and sort of draw a little thingy like this. And then you'd write the 103. And then I start to long divide in. I'd say, OK, 3 times what gives me 10. And so that would be 3. And that's a 9. And then I subtract. And I subtract nine, 10 from 9, 9 from 10. And I take, I'm sorry, 9 from 10 and get 1. Bring down the 3 and get 13. And then 3 goes into 13 four times. I have a 12. And I subtract. And when I subtract, I have a 1. And since 1 is actually the end of the deal here, there's no more stuff here, that means this is the remainder. So this is the remainder. So sometimes we used to say when we were really, really young, you might not even remember this, we used to say the answer is 34 remainder 1. And what does that mean? Well, what that means is one way of writing out this, this sort of relationship is that 103 equals 3 times 34 plus a remainder of 1. And you can check and see that 3 times 34 is 102. And then if you add 1, you get 103. So there's some, there are some names for these things. This thing here is called the dividend. That's the dividend. This thing here is called the divisor, because I'm dividing that in. This thing here, the answer that we got, is called the quotient. And this last thing right here is the remainder. And the remainder is always smaller than the divisor. OK, so that's basically a sort of review of you know, elementary school long division. And it turns out you can do polynomial division in the exact same way. What you want to do is sort of long divide through. So let me show you how this would work. Basically, if I had a polynomial, let's say f of x divided by g of x, what I would do is I would set something up that looks like this. g of x long divided into f of x. And I would start doing all this work just like here somehow. And at the end of the day, I would have some sort of quotient polynomial. And then down here, I'd have a remainder polynomial. And so it would look the exact same way. When I'm all done, I could write the following. I could say f of x will equal g of x times this quotient plus a remainder. So it looks very much like this, very much like this. I have a dividend, I have a divisor, I have a quotient, and I have a remainder. Now, how do you actually find these things in practice? Well, let's do an example, and you'll see it's just the same thing as this long division here. Suppose I take a look at x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 6x minus 10. That's a big old polynomial. And I divide it by x squared plus 3x minus 5. Well, that's going to be a big, long division. Let me show you how you'd set this thing up and how we'd actually divide. Now, first thing I do is write this out here. So I take uh, the x squared plus 3x minus 5. And I'm going to divide that now by what? Well, by this long thing. Now, I'm not only going to write that in, but I'm going to make sure that every single possible exponent appears. So for example, I have an x to the fourth. But notice I have no x cubes. So I write that in as a placeholder with a 0 coefficient. So it's there invisibly. And then I keep going. I have a 3x squared. I have a minus 6x, and I have a minus 10. So notice that every single value, possible value for exponents appear. Even the ones that aren't really there, I put in with a 0. That's going to help me as a placeholder. Now what I do is I just look at the first term here and the first term here, and I do a long division. I say, what do I have to multiply x squared by to make it x to the fourth? And the answer is I have to multiply that by another x squared. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. 
So I'd write here x squared. Now I take the x squared and multiply it by every single term here. I take this times that, which means the whole quantity. So I'd see an x to the fourth. I see a plus 3x cubed. And I see a minus 5x squared. Now what do I do? Well, the next thing I do is I subtract everything. Now I've got to subtract everything, everything. Don't make classic mistake number four, the subtracting mistake. Don't forget to share the negativity. So if I share the negativity, 4x minus 4x, that's 0. And that should always be 0 because I deliberately figured out what to multiply this by to make it exactly that. But then I have these other terms. I have 0x cubed minus 3x cubed. So that's a negative 3x cubed. And then I have a 3x squared minus a negative 5x squared. So that means I add and get 8x squared. And then what do I do now when I long divide? I bring down the next term, just like in good old fashioned long division. So I minus 6x. And then I come back and ask, OK, what do I have to multiply x squared by to make it look like minus 3x cubed? And the answer would be minus 3x. Because minus 3x times x squared is minus 3x cubed. So now I take this term and multiply it by every single term here. And let's see what happens. If I multiply it by this, I see minus 3x cubed. That's good. It should be the same thing as this. And then here I see a minus 9x squared. And this times this is a plus 15x. And now I'm going to subtract again. And I have to subtract everybody. And when I subtract, what do I see? Minus 3x cubed minus minus 3x cubed. That's 0. Then I have an 8x squared minus negative 9x squared. So I add and see 17x squared. And then I have a minus 6x minus 15x. So that's going to be a minus 21x. I bring down the, the last term, the minus 10. And now what do I do? Well, OK, it's not much space left, so we have to see. What do I have to multiply? x squared by to make it 17x squared. Well, 17. So I add a 17 right here and multiply through by 17. So I see 17x squared. Here I see a plus, and I have 17 times 3. Well, what's 17 times 3? Well, if you need to, you could even just take out a calculator and just say 17, 17 times 3. And you see it's 51x. And then 17 times minus 5. So you take 17 times 5. And you subtract minus 85. OK, now I'm really running off the board here. So in fact, maybe you can't even see this. Let me sort of pick up the action here just so you can see the big finish for this problem. In fact, let me just slide this up a little bit. You won't see the top part, but let me just show you the bottom part here so you can see it. What do I do now? Well, now I subtract everything again. So if I subtract everything, I have 17x squared minus 17x squared, so that's 0. Minus 21x minus 51x is minus 72x. And then I have 10 minus 10. And then I subtract negative, and this is an 85. So that's a plus 85. Minus 10 is plus 75. And notice that minus 72x plus 75 actually is a smaller polynomial than this. This just has x's in it, and this has, this has x squareds in it. So in fact, that's the remainder. And so what I see is the following. What I see is the answer is this. This is the quotient, x squared minus 3x plus 17, with a remainder, with a remainder of minus 72x plus 75. So what is this thing if you long divide it out? It's just that thing with the remainder of minus 72x plus 75.